Hello, my name is Lauren Bregitzer, an Ableton Certified Trainer and Associate Professor at the University of Colorado Denver. I'm going to show you all about clips and scenes and launching those in Ableton Live 10. When selecting clips, if your preview button is on, when you select them in your browser, it will autoplay a preview of that clip. So I'm going to grab uh, clips from this build and drop pack that comes with the Ableton Live 10 suite. And I'm going to sort through, I'm going to go for samples. So I'm going to use audio clips. So clips can be MIDI data or audio. And I'll go to the different difference here in a second. But I'm going to look for a loop here and a full loop. I can preview them by just by clicking on them. So it's previewing it at 148 beats per minute. As you can see here, it's 140 beats per minute. My live set is set at 120 beats per minute. So what's going to happen is when I drag this into an audio track, into a clip slot, I was going to label that track that beat. It was also going to change the tempo of my Ableton Live set to 148 to match the first clip that I dragged into it. So now when I launch that clip by clicking on the play button here, it's playing at 148 beats per minute. If I want to slow that down, to like 132 or something like that, I can play it back and it'll keep the same clip in pitch and everything, but with the uh, warping in Ableton Live, it will just let it play slower so it's 132 beats per minute. Now I can stop clips a couple of three or four different ways. Uh, if I hit stop, just a space bar on my keyboard, hit stop here on the toolbar, it'll stop playing that clip. Another way I can stop playing that clip, because if I just stop the playback, if I hit play again, it'll automatically start playing that clip again. Now if I want to stop playing that clip while it's playing, I can either press one of the stop buttons of a blank clip slot, or I can press the clip stop button on the bottom of the track, towards the bottom of the track, or under this master section here, there's a stop all clips button right here. That'll stop all the clips that are playing in any of the tracks. So I can do that. Now we'll stop that clip from playing. Now say I want to add a second clip to play along with this first drum beat. So I'm going to look for a percussive element to play with it. I'm going to go to the same pack, the build and drop. I'm going to go to uh, top loops. That'll be usually your higher percussive stuff. And if I'm playing that first clip and it's playing back at 132 beats per minute, when I preview other clips while that first clip is playing, it will preview the subsequent clips at the tempo of my live set. So with this clip playing, it'll preview all the other clips at 132 beats per minute, regardless of what they say, whether it's 128 beats or 71 beats, it'll keep it in time. That allows me to listen how clips play with each other in time with the song. So I'm going to add that clip to my second track here. I'm adding it to a second track because each track can only play one clip at a time. And so if I want to play both those at the same time, I have to put that second clip into a different audio track. So now that I've added that second clip, I can now play them both at the same time. So if I hit play on the first clip, which is already playing, when I hit the play button of the second clip while the first one's playing, it will start playing on the next bar. And it does this on every bar because of the global quantization. Now if I want to change my beat up in the middle of it, I can add a different drum beat here to go from this halftime beat to a different drum beat. So I'm going to load up a different audio clip in here. So I'm going to go back to my full loops here and maybe select something different.
maybe that clip will work. So if I drag that clip into that same track as my first beat, I can now launch that clip. So I'll either play the halftime beat or the love drama beat, depending on which clip I launch. So if I launch this love drama beat, it'll start playing this love drama clip here while this top percussive clip will be playing at the same time. And I can go back and forth between the two. One thing that I do like to do in Ableton Live is to change the colors because if I have different beats, I want to visually see something different. So I can do that by right clicking and just picking any other color, something contrasting to it. So now I'm going to go alternate between these two. And I notice that the beat changes every bar exactly on the bar. And that's because of the global quantization settings. So these global quantization settings are in the upper left here. It's set to one bar, so it'll change over at every bar. If I set it to half a bar, I can change that beat over every half bar. So it's something like this. And there's numerous settings as, as well as setting to turn that off completely. But by default, it usually a good idea to have it on one bar. Now if I have these clips stopped, I want to launch them together. Anything that's in a horizontal row, I can launch with a scene. So if I look at my master section, I see these scenes labeled for each sort of clip slot that I have. So this first scene has both the halftime beat and the top straight up 12 beat on there. So I click on this scene and it's going to launch both those clips at the same time. Now you can rename scenes and or label them if you want by right clicking or hitting command R and click rename. I can just call it uh, beat one. So I can visually see beat one and then launch that with that clip launch button or scene launch button. Now clips don't necessarily have to be audio. They can also be MIDI data. So if I go over here and choose MIDI clips in that same pack, and I browse through, they have them by beats per minute, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to all play back at 132 based upon my live set. I'm going to browse them. So I'm going to use this underground beat. So I'm going to drag that into a new track. Or I can drag it to a MIDI clip slot if I wanted to as well. I'm just going to drag it to a new track. And you can see now it's opened up an instrument as well because clips can contain not just information like MIDI data and audio data, but it can also contain device information like uh, instruments or effects that are used on those clips. So this one has an attached drum kit because it's a drum MIDI clip. So I can launch that with all three of those with my scene here. And it's going to play this MIDI track with these other two audio clips. Now, if I want to keep these two clips playing while I launch the scene for this track, what I can do is copy these down. Because if I don't do that, and I launch that first scene, what's going to happen is it's going to press the stop button on these two clips and stop this track four and track five from playing while this love drama beat's playing. So watch what happens. because launching that second scene, press the stop button for these two clips. So I can do a couple different things, but probably the easiest thing to do is just copy those clips down. So if I hold on the option key and drag, I then drag and copy those same clips. So now when I launch that first scene, it's gonna play back before, but when I launch the second scene, it's gonna continue playing those same clips because those are all both copied down to that second row.
And so that's how playing back clips and launching scenes in Ableton Live 10 works.